The Brie Ornate sweater is finally here. Let's dive into all the textural details and some color ideas for the Brie Ornate sweater and a coordinating Brie Ornate hat. The Brie Ornate sweater might be my new favorite sweater. I'm sorry, all my other past sweaters. There's some really good ones. I love my Dustlin sweater, but I just am in love with all the textures. And as soon as we got our new unicorn colorway, this really light lavender purple color, I knew that I needed a whole sweater in it, but I waited and waited until I had just the right texture details, because it can't just be a purple sweater. It's gotta be a purple sweater. It's just so dreamy. And I love how the textures just emphasize those beautiful light, soft, cloudy wool colors. So it's a solid sweater with dip stitches and brioche. So brioche plus dip stitches plus those ornate stitches equals the brie ornate. So this was inspired by the brie ornate shawl, that semicircular shawl I released earlier this year, and now you can have a coordinating yoke sweater. It's so, so squishy. What you're gonna find about the Brie Ornate sweater and all these dip stitches is that the resulting fabric is a little bit thicker, a little bit more plush and squishy than just a stockinette stitch fabric because of all the extra yarn, the little strands of yarn you're adding for those dip stitches. And I love the little subtle poofiness you get from the stitches compared to the garter stitch. You can just see that, oh, cloudy, voluminous texture. So these types of structured stitches are gonna look really extra frothy with non-superwash wools. If you have a superwash DK weight yarn that you like, a beautiful hand dyed yarn, that's gonna be gorgeous as well. But I would just make sure that you get a nice crisp gauge and not too loose and drapey looking. You really want those stitches to pop. So a uh, Westwool Tandem is a non-superwash wool and you're just going to need one color and between five skeins for the smallest size, upwards to eight or nine for the larger sizes. This sweater comes in nine sizes. So when you're picking out your color and figuring out which size to knit, you're gonna wanna take a look at the finished measurements, which go from 35 to 66 inches for the bust circumference, which is about 89 to 168 centimeters for the actual measurement of the sweater. I'm wearing size five with about six inches with about 15 centimeters of positive ease. So on the sides of my size five sweater, there's a little bit of wiggle room, which I really like for the fit of my casual sweaters. So it's not too tight and not too sloppy looking. So if you have anywhere between like three, four, five inches, like six to 10 centimeters or so of positive ease, that's gonna be really nice for that casual effect. And make sure you just pick your favorite color. This is your chance to make your dream sweater just come true. So I loved knitting this lavender colorway. It's called Unicorn, and we have lots of kits if you wanna pick your own kit, just select your size. We have all these kits at Stephen and Penelope in our rainbow tandem DK weight assortment. So let's dive into some colors and maybe get some ideas of how we can bring this sweater and the coordinating hat to life. So I have the purple. I think if you choose a light color of West Wool, that's really gonna emphasize the crisp clarity of your stitches. So some of our lighter colorways are called glass. It's a really icy blue. This buttercup is a really light yellow. This would really show off all those little dip stitch details for the buttercup color. And one of my favorite pinks is this flamingo pink. It's a really solid, kind of a light strawberry tone to it. It's a beautiful coral, uh, very almost into the pastels, but it definitely delivers a bit of a punch, this flamingo colorway. To compare it to one of our other coral colors, this one's called Starfish. It's a heathered color, and it's a little bit more creamy and neutral. And next to Starfish, you can really see the punchiness of that flamingo. So I think that with dip stitches would look really fun and fresh, or a little bit more subdued with that beautiful starfish color. So those are some light options. In our mid-tone range of West Wool, we have a lot of saturated blues and greens. This is the North Sea colorway. 
And when you play with the dip stitches for the sweater, the same dip stitches and brioche are used in the Briornate hat. If you're new to brioche, or if you're new to this dip stitch technique, there's video links in the pattern that show you all the dip stitch step-by-step -step tutorials. And I have some brioche videos here on YouTube as well. So if you've never done those techniques, then I would recommend starting the hat first. All these stitches done in the round, I think are much easier than doing them flat. This is what the wrong side of the fabric looks like. Nice little bumpy texture and then you get that brioche reversibility. So when you're doing the hat in the round, it's gonna be, I think, really quick and easy for you to learn any of these new techniques. And once you do the hat, and if it looks like the picture, then you can confidently cast on the sweater and uh, knit it to suit your own length. So this North Sea hat, and uh, I have a couple other colors. This North Sea Briornate hat was done with just one skein. This is the Royal colorway. This was the first one I knit, and I've been wearing this one a lot. It has a little bit of slouch in the back. So if you put it, the brim all the way down, there's still a little bit of wiggle room back there, which I like. If you want it more fitted, you could fold the brim. And then when it's fitted, you have a thicker folded brim. But I like wearing these slouchy style hats. It's very similar in the size to the Dustland hat that has a little bit of a poof back there. And this lime green, this is the pickle, ju pickle juice colorway. I definitely need a pickle juice sweater in the future. I don't know if I'll do another Brie Ornate or come up with some other design, but I need this lime. Or maybe with the purple, Ooh, or a color work. <gasps> I need this as a sweater. And then maybe with the dark <gasps> contrast. Okay, this is, this is why I keep coming up with all these sweaters and shawls. I like play with one color and it just ignites a whole world of color possibilities. So I think this needs to be in the future. <gasps> oh, maybe with a little brown. Oh, I don't know, okay, I like these. Okay, so pickle juice, it's such a good, very light, zingy lime green, and it's really gonna show off those stitches as well. So that's pickle juice, and then you could do a matchy hat, but I like doing different colored hats, so you can play with that color blocked. Your green hat, purple sweater, and then maybe some burgundy trousers or blue, so color block it, and don't worry about matchy-matchy. I don't believe matchy-matchy is perfect, I do love a good matchy-matchy moment, but I like the coordinating of colors. And when you get that cool clash of colors, it just gets a little bit more fun to style and uh, mix with your wardrobe. So a few other colors that we have for the kits. I wanna go through a few of my favorite medium colors and those darker tones that get a little bit more moody. The green olive is a really saturated medium tone green, and it has this golden glow to the color, so that would still make the stitches pop out. And one of my favorite new colors, you'll be seeing this in a lot of my new designs this year, is corduroy. It's very deep, very plum wine in that warm purple range, and it's still glowing enough where you're gonna see the texture, but whenever you knit a darker sweater, the texture details are a little more subtle, but it's a solid yarn, so you're still gonna see lots of crisp columns and little dip stitch floaty strands of yarn. So that's corduroy, and then a couple others for you jewel tone lovers. We have Fandango, our orchid purple, and this is Enchanted, no, this one's Norway. Norway looks a little bit like Enchanted. This is Enchanted side by side. Norway is a bit more green, a bit more teal, one of our original colorways, and Enchanted leans more into the blues, and a little more of that dusty blue vibe. This is a bit more of a glowing jewel tone, Norway. Really beautiful for a sweater. Enchanted, it, it brings in that dusty blue tonality. So you'll find all these kits. They're at Stephen and Penelope, all sizes. Just pick your size, pick your color. The coordinating hat is just one skein. So we have all our colors listed as individual skeins. You could get just one skein for a hat, or get a couple different colors and make one for you, make one for your friend, but pick your favorite color for you, okay? You, you deserve it, you're the one knitting it. So one skein wonder for those Brie Ornate hats, and the patterns, as always, are on Ravelry and westknits.com, so have fun with color and transform this pattern with all your own yarn ideas. This one's with our tiger color and a little bit of a smaller size. 
So I'm just, I'm in love with all these textures and can't wait to see you embrace the dip stitches, try out the brioche and make the sweater of your dreams.